oh man, it's so nice to have power. Living in an RV, we have become keenly aware of the amount of energy that we use, especially coming off of three months boondocking. So we decided that it would be a really great lesson for our kids to teach them how energy is produced and where. month or so we visited three different power plants and we thought it'd be really fun to figure out how many Wendy's each power plant could power. We researched what the average home size is in America which we were surprised to find out is about 2300 square feet. Based on the generator that we use to power Wendy when we are boondocking we figured out how many generators it would take to power an average American home which equaled out to about So the first one we're gonna talk about is Crested Dunes Solar Energy Project. This is right outside of Tonopah, Nevada. Really unique solar power plant that uses molten salt to store the energy for up to 10 hours so that you can actually use the power when it's cloudy or at night, which is a really, really neat design. It powers 75,000 homes in Nevada. That's 600 wilds windy. From here, to the North Pole. All right, so the sun hits the mirrors, which are called heliostats. There's over 10,000 of them in that big giant circle and it bounces the sunlight to the receiver, which is that huge bright thing in the middle, and it heats up the salt. And this orange, dark orange, is the hot, hot, hot salt. It's like over 10, it's over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. On 1,050 degrees Fahrenheit. Most of these coils, it gets cold, and the steam comes off, goes into this generator, and that produces the energy. After it's used, it goes into the cold, salt tank, which is actually still 500 and it again. degrees, and it shoots back up and it shoots over and over and over again. That bright light over there does not shine when the clouds are over or when it's night. It only shines when it's reflected with the sunlight from the helostats. The next place that we visited was Hoover Dam. Fun story about Hoover Dam. My parents were wed in a cute little chapel in Las Vegas and on their wedding day they visited the Hoover Dam and they were so fascinated by the Hoover Dam that they were late for their time at the chapel. Oh, oh my fearing biscuits! I'm late, I'm late, I'm late! So they had to call and push their time back for their wedding. Our kids got a kick out of it and they really enjoyed standing in the spots where my folks visited so many years ago, over three decades ago. It was a really great experience and we learned a lot about harnessing the power of water. We made it through, but John had to get inspected in there. They made him open every compartment and go inside our rig and check inside our rig. We have to park in the very furthest parking lot away from the visitor center. Okay, so we're gonna have lunch, but we're um, more than a mile away if we were to walk it from here. So we're gonna take our second vehicle and hop in and go find a parking spot closer to the visitor center down below. Oh, it's crazy windy when you have to put the stabilizers down just to have lunch. It's really windy outside. Like this thing is really moving. There might be a reason why there isn't anybody else in this parking lot. It's terrifying. This does not even give it justice. 
how terrifying this big, huge toilet bowl hole looks. We are at the something dam. The Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam. And we are about to do what? We are about to do the Hoover Dam tour. Yep. It's going to be great. We're going down a shaft inside the dam. The dam is 726 feet tall. We're going down 527 feet. So we're not going clear to the bottom. Walking through that tunnel, you're going to go right through the dam. We're going to come out at, at the edge of the dam into the power plant. Many millions have come down this tunnel. Now welcome to the Hoover Dam Power Plant. You gotta say it. Dilly dilly. No, you gotta say it. That's the best. It's the best damn water they've ever had. We're heading into the visitor center at Hoover Dam. Here's a pro tip for you. If you come here, take the power plant tour. It's $15, but it costs $10 just to get into the visitor center. Per person, $15 per person. Per person, Yeah. right. And it costs $10 per person to get into the visitor center anyways. So you're basically paying an extra five bucks to go down and see the turbines, which are pretty cool. Yeah. This is the original crane that built it the dam. It is the oldest and largest continuously operating cableway crane system in the world. What do you think? Smash that like button. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Hoover Dam provides power for 1.3 million homes. That's enough power for 10.4 million Wendy's. Basically enough Wendy's to go around the world three times. So right now we are inside of the turbine. So this is what spins because of the force of the water. And you've got wound copper wire against very strong mag magnets that produce the energy. And the water just spins the whole thing. It's really fascinating. This is like a power plant and you are the water. I need the light on though. I need the light. So we're gonna turn the light on. Sure I'm getting done uh, yet. Well, let's see. And you know what? I wanna watch the TV too. It's speakers, gotta have the speakers, and the video game system. Oh my gosh, you better keep going. Oh, you better make a phone call. Oh, the phone's ringing. Mom's gonna run the vacuum and watch, watch this. Wow, vacuum generates a ton. And the light. And the light. Wow. Oh, well, AC. AC, here it comes. Yeah. This place was built in the 30s. Can you believe with all of our modern, modern technology that they came up with this in the 1930s? Pretty incredible. And it still stands today. It still functions the way they designed it way back then. When you cross Hoover Dam, you're not only crossing from one state to another, you're also crossing time zones. So it's a different time of the day on either side of the dam, which was super fun. Palo Verde was the first place that we went but it was the largest. It is a nuclear generating station, nuclear power plant, and that we learned so much there. It was incredible. This was not advertised online or anywhere. This actually started our entire adventure of learning about energy because we camped nearby it, and we were kind of a little nerve-wracked by camping so close to a nuclear power plant. So we did some research. We decided we were gonna learn about nuclear energy and just contact the company and see if our little old family could go visit their nuclear power plant. And guess what? It turns out they have a visitor center. <laughs> Let's learn more about nuclear energy, shall we? Lights. We are here at Palo 
Verde Energy Education Center in Buckeye, Arizona. We uh, stayed at Tonopah just down the road where the actual nuclear facility is located. It is the single largest power producing plant in the United States. Over 4 million homes. Over 4 million homes get power from this plant. Whoa. 32 million Wendy's. That's from here to the moon. awesome and it's a great homeschool experience. Bring your kids here, teach them how their power is produced. Behind me is a mock-up of the pipe that goes from the major part of Phoenix down to the Palo Verde nuclear power plant. It is 36 miles long. This is a gigantic pipe. What's really neat about this is that the plant is cooled entirely by the wastewater from Phoenix. The Electricity produced at Palo Verde is sent to home, school, and business throughout the world. Go ahead and flush the handle. So this is what happens when you flush. Watch the blue line. Oh, okay, watch the blue line. The water is used mainly in the cooling cores where the nuclear assemblies are dropped down and housed inside of to help keep things cool. So those big giant cones and things that you see if you happen to be driving by this, all that smoke and stuff coming off of it, it's just steam. It's just steam. There is no emissions from this power plant at all. That um, parts that are in the water is actually this right here. And every pipe, little pipe, is filled with little, little pellets about the tip of my pinky. It's cool. This is super fascinating. There are small pellets of refined uranium this size, that's a legit one ton of coal. This pipeline here, it represents 17,000 cubic feet of natural gas or three of these really large oil barrels. That same small pellet will produce the same amount of energy as each one of these. This behind me is called a dry cask storage. So all of that spent fuel that you hear about that's mm. floating around somewhere in the universe right now, um, this is what they are actually stored in. This facility has been around for over 30 years. They are, they're initially stored, their rods, in water and then they're transferred to a dry cask which is this thing as you can see here it's got these little pockets for them. yeah there's these little square pocket things these are concrete walls with the steel rebar um, encasing it and they have a concrete lid you can hug it there's no um, danger of radiation on the outside of these it's completely 100 percent contained they are also um, protected against any kind of impact or seismic activity so they're not going to break turns out they actually store them on site at their um, facility and it's about the size of a football field now it's not all the way full mm -hmm. they currently have 105 of these canisters that are stored on site at their facility that is all the waste that they've ever produced in the entire lifetime of this of this plant. Yucca Mountain in Nevada is a facility that has been designed to store these casks for all of the nuclear facilities in the United States total. And it is a it was put there because it is seismically safe, safe in that location and built to contain these dry casks of the spent fuel. The thing is, is this kind of energy produces zero emissions. There is no carbon emissions whatsoever. In fact, there's more pollution from the cars of the workers driving to the plant than there is in the actual plant itself. And they use recycled water from the city of Phoenix. for watching and learning about energy with us. This has been such a great learning experience for us and we love living in Windy and traveling and figuring these types of things out. We would never have had this experience if it weren't for our lifestyle. We'll see you next week, guys. Stay tuned. <laughs>